Good morning, mask enthusiasts, Halloween collectors, and other emotionally interesting humans and non-humans. Come on in. It's time for another installment of Creepy Cheapies with Dr. Lady here at the Library of Horror Hotel. I'm Abner Doubleday, and you may have a ghost right behind you right now, and you don't even know it. Your house could be haunted. How will you know? Hmm. Well, you could call those, uh, who are those guys? Who are you going to call? I forget, but... If you don't want to call those guys, um, just ask me. I can probably tell you whether it's haunted. But I hope if it is, that it isn't haunted by somebody too much like Aunt Helen. What? Aunt Helen, you know, she's the kind of ghost that just, just hangs around. You know, every family has somebody like Aunt Helen in there. You know, the... That, that relative that nobody really knows very well and nobody's really sure how she's related to anybody else and nobody's sure who invited her to Thanksgiving. But she shows up every Thanksgiving and she just kind of hangs around and haunts the place even after uh, the dinner is over and, and um, the guys are in there watching football and, and eventually uh, you know, Grandpa and them had fallen asleep in front of the TV with the football game on, and the, the young young people are watching uh, planes, trains, and automobiles, and and so forth. And you know, Thanksgiving is over, and all that. And Helen's still hanging around, haunting the place, and she kind of can't take no for an answer. So, uh, just judging from the look of her, I don't want to be the one to tell her to leave. So I think we should just put up with her. But who is Aunt Helen? Other than all that stuff I just randomly making up, who is she? She is a horrifying evil spirit. Okay, she says she's not evil. Uh, that's her point of view, of course, you know, and she's entitled to it. Yeah, yeah. Aunt Helen is a 2019 mask release from the folks at Horror Dome. And I've said this before, I think Horror Dome probably deserves more recognition than they get in the world of collector masks because they make some really wonderful stuff, like Aunt Helen. Um, from 2019. We're going to zoom up on her here. Why is she called Helen? I don't know. Who are you named after? Who is she named after? I don't know that. It occurs to me. I have no idea why she's called Aunt Helen. Who is she named after? Um, certainly not Helen Marnie or, or Helen Reddy or Helena Bonham Carter. Helena Handbasket, maybe. Uh, who were you named after? Oh, oh. She thinks she was probably named after Helen of Troy. Yeah, okay, but not so long after. Anyway, let's have a good close look, if there's any such thing possible in, uh, in Aunt Helen's case. Let's have a close look at this creepy face. You can't get much creepier than this and still be street legal, can you? Now, uh, I don't know if you can tell on your, uh, your monitor there, but the eye openings on Aunt Helen are actually below her eyes instead of above them, which is kind of cool because it's a little disconcerting for those uh, kids and other individuals who feel all clever for knowing that the eye slits are above the eyes on most masks. They won't find them on her. And look at those creepy eyes. Uh, again, I don't know what this looks like on your monitor, but in person, they're dark red around uh, the edges. They're, they're like a dark red eyeball uh, fading toward white in the center. And I haven't done any repainting. This is right out of the box from uh, from Horror Dome. And I love the hair on this monstrosity. You know, sometimes uh, you see a picture of a mask online or in a catalog or something and you think, oh, look at the great hair. And then you get the mask in person and you think, oh, well, that hair is not at all like I thought it was. Well, that's the opposite of what happened here. I thought, and eh, the pictures, eh, the hair looks pretty good. It's actually better in person. I don't know if you can tell. Look how very full the hair is. It's so generously applied and it's rooted. It's sewn into the rubber so it won't come off like a wig. And it's really unusually thick and full and lifelike or death-like um, for, for a wearable mask. This is a lot of hair. She's a substantial piece of material, Aunt Helen is. She's, she's got some heft and some weight to her and obviously if someone was going to wear this, this would make it easier to, you know, sort of blend it in with the costume. What would you wear with her? Um, an old-fashioned nightgown or dress, I guess. Or, or she, um, she could be, she could be a witch, right? She could be a witch or a ghost or a witch's ghost or a female zombie. Uh, you could put 
spooky hands with her, like rotted corpse hands or something. But you wouldn't really need them. She could just have normal hands or maybe have some, uh, oh, some scar makeup or blood or sharp fingernails or something to make her hands a little creepy. But great depth to the mouth and the nice, wet, realistic tongue and the nasty, gnarly teeth here that really look like a seriously deformed, misshapen set of dentures. And some nice detailing with red and pink and purple uh, here and there on uh, certain areas of the face just to break up the color a little. And again, tremendous uh, amount of hair. Great, great hair work. And it's a nice, heavy, substantial, sturdy quality uh, mask, old Aunt Helen. Now the last time I checked, Aunt Helen was selling for about 80 bucks American. Okay, which uh, may not sound like a super cheap price to some of you because some of you are saying 80 bucks? Why for 80 bucks I could buy something that costs 80 bucks? Well, that's true, but this is a lot of mass. Uh, as you could probably see there a moment ago, it's got the full neck that comes way down in the back and the full bib in the front, which leaves you a lot of room for uh, interpretation of costume, whether you want to have it come on up to her chin or show some of this zombie rotted shriveled up looking skin down here you can uh, kind of make up your own costume and I love it that she's got the occasional freckle or liver spot going on here and there just as a as a small detail but uh, now Aunt Helen is not based on any particular exact likeness but she is loosely inspired by the corpse of Mrs. Bates seen at the end of the awful awful Wait, one more awful 1998 uh, remake of Psycho. Probably the most unnecessary and unwanted movie ever made with Vince Vaughn. What? As Norman Bates. You don't know what they were thinking in 1998. Anyway, uh, the, the corpse uh, of Mrs. Bates in that Psycho movie looked kind of like this. Not an exact replica, okay? Not, not really a specific likeness, but kind of inspired. And I, I, I only mention that for the benefit of those of you who are looking at this and saying, hmm, that reminds me of something. Where have I seen something like that? You might be thinking of the uh, terrible 1998 Psycho remake uh, because she looked a little like this. That's the closest thing uh, I can think of as far as uh, zombie movies and everything, too. I, I think that's the, uh, the only real inspiration for her. But what a creepy thing Aunt Helen is hanging around the house, looking in the windows, scratching at the doors, creeping around in your basement, a good spooky one for the haunted house or the haunted hayride, or just on a dummy, like looking out the, uh, out the window of your house with a light shining up on her on Halloween, or on uh, St. Patrick's Day, if you want to be, um, you know, someone who gets talked about a little bit more in the neighborhood. Anyway, Aunt Helen, 80 bucks, Horror Dome, and, uh, well, you go and um, watch a good scary movie tonight while I go and try to figure out how to get Aunt Helen to leave my library. <laughs>